Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first off, shout out to Nike Dragon on Twitter. But uh, we do see this a little bit of a speculation um, tweet saying, you know, after the case and XRP receives clarity, Ripple IPOs and becomes a bank. There's a strategic reason why Ripple is registered in Wyoming. Now, of course, yes, this is a little bit of a speculation, but this goes back to when uh, we did see the Fed update their, you know, master accounts to support, you know, crypto banks, uh, or I should say crypto players. We do see, you know, four so-called master accounts with the central bank, uh, you know, such accounts allow financial institutions, primarily banks, to move trillions of dollars a day on the Fed's payment systems. Um, efforts by banking regulators in some states, such as Wyoming, to make it easier for such firms to obtain bank charters. Now, they do specifically mention Wyoming here, um, but we also do see over here crypto companies such as Kraken, a trading platform that applied for a Fed master account in 2020 through its Wyoming chartered affiliate, said uncertainty and prolonged delays in approving such application could hinder financial innovation. And then on the next tab, we do see the Wyoming announcement going all the way back to 2020, by the way, uh, where we did see Ripple register as a Wyoming business. And then we do see down here. A tweet from the underscore, uh, underscore sorry, go Kevin 11. Uh, why does the Federal Reserve hold its symposium in Wyoming? Why does Wyoming have, you know, some of the first security interest in digital asset laws in place? Will the Fed be a custodian of a digital asset security asking for a friend? And uh, we do see this full on breakdown here talking more so about how, you know, Ripple did register as a Wyoming business going all the way back to February of 2020. We do see taking control of a digital asset security and holding it for two years, obtaining perfect possession and in turn is ready to use it for launch of ISO 2022 and 2025 XRP equals one world currency. This is making more and more sense as the days go on. And uh, when we look at this, like, you know, are we going to clarify the fact that like XRP could be like the one world currency it's a possibility that it could be the global bridge currency for all uh you know cbdc's to be backed by gold for an example and bridge all of them for means of transaction in regards to real-time settlement that could very well be a possibility but do i think that this is the start of it it's interesting to say the least. I'm not going to, you know, say 100% certain that it is. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below, though. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I do think that the connections are, uh, you know, something substantial, but I also do think that the Federal Reserve becoming bullish on crypto, starting to move towards crypto, is also a very good sign. Uh, we've talked about the Fed now service uh, payments with Volante, how they will most likely source XRP as a liquidity source, and it is very interesting. But also, does Ripple really need to become a bank? Remember, nearly, you know, all top 100 banks are already working with Ripple. Uh, I go back in time a little bit. This is 2019. Since 2019, we have seen a lot of banks leave. We've been seeing a lot of banks join. Um, and this shows us that, you know, 38 of the top 100 largest banks are actually utilizing Ripple and XRP. Um, a lot of them are customers. They are also Ripple Net committees, uh, committee members, sorry. And uh, a lot of this is through SBI. And you guys do see the status over here. You also do see, you know, them all being um, on the Ripple XRP list. Um, a lot of them are pretty substantial names as well. I mean, at the top here, these are like the top ones. Like, you you know, for an example, like Mitsubishi, uh, UFJ, Financial Group, HSBC Holdings, Bank of America, and uh, of course, a few other ones here as well. These are very large names. But again, like I said, Ripple is most likely going to have an on-demand liquidity bridge built out between all of the major central banks, uh, meaning that we really wouldn't need to see Ripple become a bank, but it is a possibility that it could be at some point in time. Similar to LCX, we've talked about LCX becoming a digital bank for crypto. Um, it is in their pipeline for the future. We don't know exactly when that is set to launch, but if we do see a lot more you know, companies starting to do that, we could definitely probably see Ripple do that as well as they have been a leader uh, behind the banking sector and financial sector. Also, we do see over here, why would they constantly delay it? Why would they refuse to hand over emails? Why not settle? Why are the SEC pushing so hard in the library case and claim utility does not matter? One of the first things Judge Nepburn stated in the Ripple case was that XRP had utility. We know that the SEC makes up arguments as they go, and they probably realize they're done just by the utility comment by the judge. Since she contrasted it with Bitcoin, Ethereum as having less utility, thus trying to get a rolling with you know library that utility doesn't matter. And shout out to Anders for this. And this goes back a little bit to August 15th. The 
that JPM Ethereum theory is the only theory where you don't need some mental gymnastics to explain the sequence of events and behavior of the SEC. And yes, this is exactly what we have been watching for. To me personally, when we really kind of look at what's happening behind the scenes, though, I kind of agree with Molly down here. Commercial banks are fighting for survival. If they don't lock up a role in the new blockchain digital economy, they will be phased out. They're in a tough spot, worried about being you know, displaced by big tech, crypto, as well as CBDCs. No need for correspondent banking in the long run, removing $240 billion in yearly revenue. You know, expect it to grow well over $260 billion. We've talked about that just yesterday. Um, at the same time, being uh, sorry, notoriously slow moving, legacy truth or legacy tech. Yeah, exactly. Like we have been watching this closely. To me personally, when we look around this case, you know, their goal since day one was to delay, delay, delay. They didn't care about winning this case. They wanted to delay this as much as possible so that XRP can get stifled in regards to not only movement within this market, but also growth within the United States. There's a big, you know, issue going on right now. And also, when we go over to this tweet from December of 2021, um, for anybody who did not watch this video, I highly advise you go check out Digital Asset Investor on Twitter. He just recently quoted this, um, but this entire video, it's two minutes long. I'm telling you guys, please watch it. There's also a full on video on this on the uh, PBD podcast with Johnny Deaton. Um, this entire thing shows internal documents of the speech draft where a ton of the questionnaires got you know blanked out. Um, it is a big issue. A lot of it is being hidden behind closed doors. A lot of the things within this entire lawsuit are being hidden from the public. We, we asked the question, why? Why? What is going on here? And also, even Johnny Dean, going back to November of 2021, said, remember when Ethereum Joseph tried to argue Ripple and XRP weren't competitors to Ethereum? That was a definite signal that XRP was, in fact, viewed as a threat. In 2018, when Lewin made the fact that, or sorry, made the assertion that XRP was battling Ethereum for the number two spot behind Bitcoin, now read this. No, no, XRP is a useless token intermediated on a centralized ledger, and Ether is a digital fuel necessary to run smart contracts like gasoline is needed to run a car. Ether has been deemed a commodity already already by the CFTC. This goes back to 2021, September. These individuals are extremely centered on Ethereum being the number one choice. We do see down here, I don't represent Ripple. I do represent, however, 58,000. Since then, this has grown to 70,000 XRP holders. And calling XRP a useless token is both idiotic and untrue. Having that much um, animus against XRP after Ethereum was given a regulatory free pass. Nonetheless, proves XRP was and still is perceived as a threat. XRP is a massive threat to a lot of these major you know, tokens. We do see even Charles Gasparino's uh, tweet below is part of the Ethereum free pass timeline. It was Andrew Keyes who slipped up and told Gasparino that the Brooklyn Project's efforts was approved by the SEC. One would assume a free pass would generate more grace and confidence in those who benefit it. And we do see down here from 2018, by the way, two years before the lawsuit, um, you know, through an organization known as the Brooklyn Project, we do see a few names here, um, you know, blockchain and crypto business seeks to create the first self-regulatory organization sanctioned by the SEC more now. And then uh, we do see with Ethereum Joseph and Consensus Andrew. We do see down here, was XRP useless when the World Economic uh, Forum listed it as one of the two most relevant crypto assets related to inter and intra bank payments and settlements regarding wholesale CBCs? And here's the full on breakdown. Like there's so much behind this. Like these Ethereum maxis are extremely distraught because they do know that guess what? At the end of the day, Ethereum needs to be pushed into a centralized light in order for it to actually even scale properly. This is why I've said that Ethereum 2.0 is extremely bearish for anybody who does support Ethereum. Staking, the proof of staking model is proven to be a centralized model. I mean, think about it. Somebody who is holding a large percentage in regards to staking, right, can control what happens on the network. This is a big issue. It takes centralization to a whole new level. When we look at Ethereum, it is not decentralized. We've discussed this. We've talked about it. And no, I'm not hating on Ethereum. In fact, I don't care what Ethereum does. In fact, I don't even care that Ethereum is ahead of XRP in market cap or has outperformed XRP. I'm paying attention to the facts here. And the facts are that the higher ups from Ethereum are completely and utterly, you know, scared of XRP. In fact, I think that this tweet today from Vitalik um, proves this. 
And we do see Johnny Dean quoting it. Everyone truly interested in whether the Ethereum co-founders Vitalik Buterin and Ethereum Joseph and others push back against regula uh, regulation. Sorry, that privileged Ethereum should go to my crypto law US website. No sponsors. I just prefer the truth and select the video library tab. And yes, he does break down this um, in the, or on that website, the entire breakdown of it really kind of targeting this specific you know, topic. And uh, he goes to even mention a few things down here in regards to like how Ethereum became the only game in town um, and so much more. Even down here, like here's a, you know, tweet with 6 million impressions, but should have 50 million impressions, pure facts about the entire case, more so centered on the corruption behind Ethereum. And uh, these are some major shots being fired from Vitalik and even David Schwartz. Yes, that's right, David Schwartz. And by the way, talking about that 70,000, uh, you know, individuals behind this case, Case. Yeah, that's actually a wild card behind this entire lawsuit. What do you see here? There's one wild card in this whole Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. John Deaton and the 70,000 plus XRP holders. The SEC has tried to exclude us not once, but twice. That should tell you how much they don't want the judge to hear us in this case. We are the ace in the sleeve, 100%. And also, Going back to the shots fire tweet, here we have it. So five hours ago, glad to see Ethereum people pushing against regulations that privilege Ethereum over other legitimate cryptocurrencies. And again, he goes on to, you know, describe a little bit more. And then we do see David down here responding saying, if they had restricted XRP, I wouldn't have said anything because we do see down up here, like you, you know, buy 20,000 of Solana, a restricted cryptocurrency. You now use $20,000 of your $30,000 annual limit. If you want to purchase more crypto, you're limited to buy a maximum of $10,000. And this is that Canada law that just got, you know, it got released today where it says that you have a 30,000 um, annual limit on purchasing crypto. A weird, very weird law. Um, but we do see like if they had, you know, restricted XRP, I wouldn't have said anything. XRP already lost their right to protection when they tried to throw us under the bus as China controlled, in my opinion. And this goes back to, uh, you know, 2020, December 21st, by the way, when the lawsuit came in, uh, where, you know, again, v Vitalik called XRP and Ripple basically, you know, garbage, uh, which I thought was funny. Um, and we do see down here um, some responses to this specifically from the XRP community, but also David Schwartz. We do see up here, uh, you guys gonna respond to this, laugh out loud. The government should punish projects that disagree with our narrative. Seems pretty on brand for Ethereum. And I thought this was probably one of the biggest shots fired from David Schwartz. And we do see down here, also I do think it's perfectly fair to, you know, anal uh, sorry, and now, analogize, I can't even talk, miners in POW systems to stakeholders in companies just as eBay stockholders earn from the residual friction between buyers and sellers that eBay does not remove. So do miners in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Just as eBay stock, uh, stockholders want to leave as much friction between buyers and sellers as they can because th that's their revenue stream, so do miners in Ethereum and Bitcoin. That's part of why they have higher fees than XRP Ledger. Do you think this debate should be settled by the government or the market, Vitalik Buterin? This quotation wasn't pulled from some attempt by Ripple to get the government to regulate Ethereum, was it? And again, you know, when we really kind of look at the shots fired from David Schwartz, not only David Schwartz, though, like there's a ton of individuals from the XRP community really coming in here and uh, talking more so about things happening behind the scenes. You know, I really would love to see the fact that when we really kind of look at XRP, it is constantly being targeted from these individuals. Listen, they already won. They got their free pass. Ethereum has, you know, basically gotten the, you know, 100% clearance from the SEC because of some insiders really kind of having insider, you know, knowledge, which if you guys don't think that they did, uh, go check out this video, by the way, from, you know, DI, uh, DAI. Um, this is a one minute and 58 second video where Joseph Lubin is talking about the insider information from 2019 that he received, talking more so about, you know, regulatory clarity behind tokens, specific tokens. And then he says, you know, Ripple and XRP did not have it. Um, and this is that entire um, breakdown over here from Johnny Deaton. Um, this is actually talking more so about this. He, I believe he actually even includes this video specifically in this as well. Um, I'm not too sure, but there's a lot of quotes here. There's a ton of information behind this. So yeah, here it is. On January 19th, 2019, Lubin said, we are, you know, big friends and fans of the SEC. Uh, he explained how the SEC introduced a new construct, you know, called decentralization and Bitcoin and Ethereum warrant securities. And he pointed out that they have not said the same about other tokens like XRP. Hmm. Pretty interesting that they would hear this back in 2019. 
you know, years ahead of the lawsuit. Again, when we look at these major names in the space, Vitalik Buterin is an absolute clown behind this entire market. Everyone wants to, you know, tout him as some incredible individual. Listen, you could tell that when we look at XRP compared to Ethereum, XRP was clearly on the path to not only surpass Ethereum, but ultimately could have, and I say this with ultimate seriousness, it could have easily have surpassed the market cap of Bitcoin this run around. There was enough you know, news, there was enough announcements, there was so much going on behind the scenes with Ripple as well during 2020 that could have easily have, you know, helped XRP you know, do a run similar to 2017, 2018, but even more because there's a lot more money in this market now compared to 2017, 2018. And remember, XRP had a market cap of almost $140 billion in 2017 and 2018. That's insane. So when we look at this, yeah, XRP was a major threat and it still is a major threat to Ethereum as they constantly have to bring it up in discussions. I don't understand why they are so scared of XRP, or I should say we actually do know, but again, it's just funny that it has to constantly be brought up. And uh, I love the fact that David Schwartz is absolutely calling them out, hitting them with some major shots. And you'll never see a response, by the way, from like Vitalik Buterin with this, within this, because they know exactly what will happen if they did respond? Then we do see our Ethereum team. He's not human, like a phoenix. And uh, yeah, I mean, like it, it, it's funny, right? Because when we look at uh, the arguments here between David Schwartz and some of these higher ups within the Ethereum Foundation, none of them stand a chance in regards to an argument. Um, and it's just it, it's just comical that we are still seeing this argument coming from like the Ethereum uh, main co-founders, and it's still happening today. Like it's insane to me and going all the way back to the lawsuit, like every one of these major individuals that talked down on XRP during this time is comical to me. It's absolutely comical to me. Vitalik Buterin sold Ethereum at the top of 2017, 2018. And there's a ton of information regarding the corruption and insider, you know, knowledge of this lawsuit behind the scenes with the sec, the, Inf the information is so clear to me today um, how manipulated this entire SEC lawsuit is. And uh, I'm sorry that I went on a little bit of a rant, but uh, it definitely is something that bothers me. And I do think that it should bother every single XRP holder out there as well, that it's clearly one of the most hated assets within the space, simply because these major individuals also realize the potential and the power behind this token, and they are fearful of it. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up that you all have a beautiful day, a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.